Hey guys, um, it's actually happened. We all probably knew it was going to happen eventually, but the Premier League have announced that uh, football has been postponed uh, until April the 4th, and it's a shocker. Um, it's big, big news. Um, I'm not trying to be crass here, but I've got to do this. Go and download one football. It's a fantastic app and probably going to be the source of actual any interesting news during this kind of uh, downtime, I guess. And it helps keep this channel going. So if you want to do me a massive favor personally, go and download it because I'm, I'm going to need that favor, honestly. Um, I'm not trying to be crass here and kind of, but I have to kind of do these kind of things. But one football is genuinely a very good app. And actually, I got the notification bang on 11 o'clock from one football saying that Premier League has been postponed. So it's very reliable and very up to date so go download it right now um, but let's talk about the big news um yeah this is on the premier league.com the premier league and the fa and the efl and the women's super league have collectively agreed to postpone the professional game in england uh, essentially this is what the press release says um following a meeting of shareholders today it was unanimously decided to suspend the premier league with the intention of returning on april the 4th subject to medical advice and conditions at the time Premier League uh, Chief Executive Richard Master said, Above all, we wish Mikel Arteta and Callum hudson Adoy speedy recoveries and everyone else affected by COVID-19. In this unprecedented situation, we are working closely with our clubs, government, the FA and EFL and can reassure everyone that health and welfare of players, staff and supporters are our priority. Despite the challenges, it's a Premier League's aim to reschedule the displaced fixtures, including those played by academy sides, when it is safe to do so. In this fast-moving environment, further updates will be provided when appropriate. So there we have it. Now, um, no one's really surprised, I guess. It seems like it's a logical thing to do. Uh, a player is going to be at risk of this, and I don't blame the players for one second. And also, I guess, the match-going fans. I need the staff working at the stadium. And I also kind of understand why working behind closed doors doesn't really work, because you think about the amount of people that they have to be involved in uh, even a behind closed doors game, you're talking about 30 technical staff, including the players, on a coach going to a game alone. Never mind all the kind of stadium security, they'll still be there anyway. Um, the referees, the officials, any media crew will be there. You're looking at probably about 100 people involved in a game behind closed doors. And put it simply, a lot of people don't want to be subjected to this. And why should they be? Especially if players are getting ill, because then they have to see family and friends. And it's showed, obviously, there's probably not many better ways for it to spread than in a dressing room, you know, <laughs> full of sweaty, um, breathing uh, athletes who are probably going to be passing it on at a, a very risky rate and stuff. So I don't really blame them. Uh, I don't blame them at all. Now, um, on a personal perspective, <laughs> I'm a bit worried right about now. What am I going to talk about? But I understand the greater uh, health goods. I shouldn't really hand him a notice in it. A month ago, should I? <laughs> but I understand that this is essential, you know. On a personal perspective, my dad's a steward at Manchester City. And if you're watching this, dad, um, I am kind of relieved you're not going to games anymore because I didn't, and my dad's, you know, 60. He has underlying health conditions, underlying health, and I love him to bits. Um, and I don't want him at games personally. Now, maybe he would have been fine. We don't know. But obviously, I'm going to think about that all the time. So I, a small part of me is relieved that he won't be exposed to that. Now, I understand anyone that is going to be missing football, 100%, I understand that. Um, I understand that people look forward to it and they love it and what they're going to do now. And But this is just essentially where we're at now, I guess. Um, we're in, uh, this is relatively unprecedented times, I guess. Um, and this is a scary time. Now, all we can do, obviously, is kind of heed government advice and all that kind of stuff, um, which I guess government maybe didn't ban mass gatherings, but the Premier League have you know, their, their own body. They can do what they want to. But all we can do is look after each other and wash our hands and all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, and I guess the bigger question is now of what's going to happen with the Premier League season. Now, I personally, I mean, I don't really care what they do about it as long as they make sure everyone's okay. I know that's a very simple kind of approach, but some things to me are more important than football um, and health <laughs> and our loved ones. They are the obvious things that are more important. At the end of the day, football is still just a bunch of people kicking the ball about, you know? Uh, people will turn around and say, well, what's the difference between uh, football and people getting on the tube every day and... Do you know what? I guess you kind of got a point, apart from the fact that, you know, the tube um, isn't it isn't like people just go... Into, basically, football is a entertainment. It's a, something we do in our spare time to kill time. People getting on the tube every day are probably going to work to pay their bills or going to work or taking people to school or whatever or going to shops to get food. These things are kind of essential. Football kind of isn't essential. For some people, it would be their job, of course, but I'm sure hopefully the vast majority will still have a job and still be fine. Um but the, it's a very false comparison. I know it isn't just a flu for anyone saying that. There will be a comment or two below this video going, oh, it's just a flu. Apart from every health expert in the world and uh, WHO uh, saying otherwise, it isn't just a flu. It's much more serious, unfortunately. And fingers crossed this curve does start to flatten out. But in terms of the future options now, 
In Italy, let me find a tweet, actually. Uh, Marcotti pulled out what the options were they were considering in Italy. Let me try and find them. Uh, they were a couple of days ago. Uh, I'll bring it up right now. Gabriel Marcotti said in Italy, the, uh, in Serie A, they were mulling over a few options based on when stroke if the situation allows Serie A to start again. And uh, this is what they came up with, basically. Uh, one sec. They said one would be to declare the title vacant, assign the Euro spots based on current standings with no relegation. So that would be the title's vacant. They'll assign the European spots just based on where the teams are with no relegation. Two, the season would be over and title relegation would be based on the table. Uh, so season's over, title relegation would be just based on where they are currently. And number three would be playoffs for the title and relegation, which, which uh, McCotty would prefer that personally. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen. There's nothing to suggest the Premier League could follow those rules, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get to April the 4th. The idea that football will suddenly start again seems farcical to me. According to all the government's projections... Um, at that point, we're going to be somewhere approaching the peak of the curve. So why would all of a sudden it be better for us? It just won't be, I think is the honest answer. Um, I think the government will probably realise that. I think the Premier League will realise that. As to why then they're not just suspending it, well, I guess they've got time to play with. It's as simple as that, really. Um, I do understand and I do appreciate that um, this will cost some people a lot of money. Um, it's not everything, of course, but... They'll have marketing reasons. There'll be a kind of trickle-down effect on smaller clubs. I admit that. Um, there'll be an effect on uh, sponsorships for clubs, sponsorships for the Premier League. Um, players will be affected. They don't probably know how to deal with this, if I'm being totally honest. And I don't really blame them because who really planned for this? Not many people would plan for a global pandemic and how it's going to affect the league. Um, this is the kind of stuff that only tends to happen in the war times, isn't it? Let's be honest. So I don't think they know what they're doing yet, but I think what they'll do is just kind of wait it out and see. Now, in my opinion, there's absolutely no chance they're probably going to start again on April the 4th. I could, of course, be wrong, but it just seems like when you look at how things are going, why would we suddenly bet in three or four weeks' time? We're probably just not going to be, let's be honest. Um, there's nothing to suggest that, and even the government's predictions don't suggest that either. We'll all obviously disagree hugely on how to approach this. Now, personally, I really couldn't give a shit. Honestly, hand on heart, couldn't care less if they just they gave Liverpool the title now. If it means being people happy, I'm not bothered. I don't. I don't think they should do that. I do, just do whatever they want. I am not asked about football in this instance. I do agree, though, if the season isn't suspended, um, if it isn't suspended, obviously they'll play them out at some point. You decide. I do agree that maybe Euro 2020 should become Euro 2021, and then maybe hopefully have the summer to try and play it out in safer conditions. Um. But even that, that might not happen. If they suspend it, I don't know what they're going to do. If they, who, if they probably, if they void the season, what can they do? Um, I'm sure some clubs will go to legal battles. I'm sure Liverpool wouldn't be happy. Uh, and understandably, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd probably be fuming. I mean, I see the bigger picture, but I don't understand how that would be very frustrating. Um, but, you know, once again, some things are more important than a bunch of millionaires kicking football around, aren't they? <coughs> What do they do for teams that are struggling for relegation? What do they do for players that are coming out of contract soon? Um, they never got to fill their contractual obligations, maybe. Some people would argue that. What do they do about the teams fighting for promotion and spent a little bit of money to try and get them up this season? Maybe teams, you know, in January who thought, well, we're that close to it. Let's just secure it with a transfer and also they've not been given the chance to kind of get up and then they spent that money based on that and now they could be in bad accounts. Um, there's loads of reasons why this could be negative for so many clubs and obviously the answers <coughs> they're not going to be easy to come by so we're going to have to just play this by ear and see what happens now um, it's horrible it's really horrible um, and obviously I'm, I'm personally affected by it big time um, but it is what it is we've got to have to kind of buckle down and bear it um, and I'll announce that this channel is now Film Fan TV <laughs> or local next corona news tv or who knows what it's going to be but all we know is that the premier league has probably rightly uh suspended football um champions league obviously was also announced to be suspended for well, next week's games and champions league were announced earlier they're postponed likewise, likewise the europa league games um you've got to presume that there's just you know even they're just killing time really and they're only to wait until the uh, for the inevitable happen because why would anything change this quickly um i think the fa have said basically as well the fa statement Given the steps being taken across clubs, there is no alternative but for today's action. All parties are committed at this time to trying to complete the season's domestic fixture program on a liaising to establish appropriate options to do so. So the intention seems to be that they will go ahead with this at some point. It's just going to be a matter of when. Anyway, that's just some thoughts there on it. Um, all I care about is everyone staying healthy, genuinely. Um, let me know what you want to see in this channel. I'm already resigned to the fact that any kind of nostalgia content I do will only get half the views because people aren't just as interested in that than not. 
But it is what it is. That's life. I will go on. Um, hopefully, I'll go on healthily. Hopefully, you will go on healthily as well. Um, and all our loved ones will as well, because that is genuine all that matters now. Um, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, go for it. Please download more football. It does actually help genuinely. Um, thank you to all these patrons. Patreon.com forward slash this team company. If you want to help me a little bit, um, I'll do whatever I can in that instance. For now, though, um, have a good day. Uh, and let me know what you think in a bit.